Hi, this is my post fight review of the two big fights in New Jersey this past weekend. Um, I'll start with the main event, which was Adrian Broner versus Antonio DeMarco. Broner won DeMarco's WBC lightweight title. Great performance after round three. I thought I was scoring the fight on Facebook and I thought round the first three rounds were really close. And some people disagreed with me, but I didn't see that at all. I thought they were really, really close. I thought in, it, argue, you could make an argument for DeMarco winning all three of them. Uh, he was the one pressuring the fight. Broner wasn't really landing that many um, tough shots. He didn't look that great in the first three rounds. But then come round four, he then made the fight his own. Uh, I gave the next five rounds all to Broner. So um, after the first three rounds, you know, he got off a bit slowly. He then won the next five. Um, so anyway, I thought it was a great performance. Like I keep saying about Broner, and I've also said it about Mikey Garcia, um, he's got power in both hands, he's got speed, he's got talent, so he's going to go far, because those are, those are what you need. If you've got speed, if you've got speed and ability and agility, you, you, you can go far. If you've got power, you can go far. Let's take like Nigel Benn, power. If you t uh, power and heart. Uh, if you take skill, like Floyd, he's got skill and speed, can go far. But if you've got speed, power, and agility all bundled into one, you're definitely going to go far. I mean, you've just got to, because the only thing that will let you down, if that's the case, is your chin. Best casing point would be someone like Roy Jones Jr. Um, he had the speed, the power, and the agility all throughout his career. Then as he started to lose one of them, the speed, as he started to lose the speed and his reflexes, he started getting knocked out, which I think meant that he probably didn't have that much of a great chin in his career. He probably didn't have that that much of a great chin in his pro um, in his prime. But because he never used to get hit, it didn't matter. None of us knew about it because he never used to get hit. Uh, and then as soon as he started getting hit because his reflexes weren't as good, he started getting knocked out. Um, so that's the only thing that I can think would stop Adrian Broner is if he's got the weakest chin in the world. But so far, it doesn't look like he has, so um, he's going to go fast. He's a great talent. I still think he's beatable, though. Um, most people, or no, no, I won't say most, but some people, some people thought they lost to um, Daniel Ponce de Leon. Uh, I suppose if you lose, in inverted commas, if you lose one fight, then in that sense, it can just be declared a bad day at the office. You know, like... No need to punish somebody their entire career just because they had one bad day at the office. But he had that one. Uh, he also had the other one, which I mentioned in my prediction video that somebody told me about, and I haven't got around to seeing it. And I can't remember the guy's name. But anyway, it was in his first, like, ten fights, and it was a fight that he, went, um, he won by split, split decision or um, maybe unanimous decision. I'm not sure. But anyway, I've been told by a few people now that he lost that one. So, I mean, when you get more than one bad day at the office, or more than two, you could say, it's starting to get a little bit dodgy, if you see what I mean. Like, Brandon Rios against Richard Abril, some people might say bad day at the office, but if it happens again, you know, is it bad day at the office, or is it promoters making sure their guy wins? You know, that's the way you got to look at it. Um, so, anyway, I really like Adrian Broner. I love his arrogance. You know, I, I'm not bothered by that sort of thing. I, I used to like Roy Jones Jr. when he called himself the greatest ever and all of that. I like, um, uh, who else did I like? Um, I liked when Nazim Hamed did it. I liked, I especially liked it when James Tony used to talk trash. Well, he still does. Um, because if you fight the best, you're allowed to do that. Although, you know, some of those names I just named didn't always fight the best. Let's face it. But James Tony certainly did. Um, and so anyway... Uh, I'm excited about the future and all that, but I do still think he can be beaten. I think he can be beaten because some say he's already lost twice, so that is proof enough in itself. But he still gets hit too much. DeMarco was landing with some big headshots. Okay, they weren't enough to knock him out or trouble him or anything, but he was landing with big head punches. When was the last time Floyd Mayweather ever got hit by a really hard headshot? Okay, maybe against... Shane Mosley in that round two. One round out of the 12. You know, like, people are saying, oh, he's the new Floyd Mayweather. Nobody is the new Floyd Mayweather. That's, that's you know, the fact of the matter. Um, 
and I don't think you'll ever be the next Floyd Mayweather. So I don't even really see the similarities. I mean, and the only similarities I see is Broner sticking his hands so far up in the air that he's going to poke somebody's eye out with his elbow. That's all I can see is him walking up with his head as far back as possible, his elbows sticking out like knives, um, <clears throat> which I don't like to see. Floyd does that as well, and sometimes it ends up with people getting their heads punched in with an elbow. Um, but he's not Floyd, and I don't think he ever will be. I do think he's beatable, but what I don't know is who's going to beat him. That's what I don't know. I don't know who can beat him, the same way that I don't think that Andre Ward is beatable. So, like, so like, I don't think he's beatable, and therefore I don't know who can beat him. But with Broner, I think he is beatable, but I'm not sure who could do it. Uh, like, Floyd Mayweather lost to Jose Luis Castillo, in my opinion. I scored the fight three times. Every single time I had the same score. So I think he, he lost that one. But, uh, but the rematch happened, and he beat him a little bit better this time. Uh, or I should say, he sneaked that one. Um, but... Since then, nobody's really come close to beating him. Closest was probably Oscar De La Hoya. So with Broner, I'm not sure who would trouble him. Would Brandon Rios trouble him? Maybe. The, the pressuring, the pressure fighting. Would Richard Abril beat him? Because Richard Abril probably beat Brandon Rios. Could Ricky Burns beat him? You know, he's got the skill. He's got, looks like he's got a good chin. He's pretty fast. He's quite accurate. Uh, he's definitely over uh, underrated. He's definitely underrated. You know, could Ricky Burns be the guy to beat him? He's the other best fighter at the weight. Um, Yuriokis Gamboa. Could he beat him? Yuriokis Gamboa is very talented. Uh, that would be a great fight with Broner. And then you've got Lucas Mathis. Maidana, but that would probably be at about welterweight. Uh, Danny Garcia. I don't think he'd beat him. Um, Robert Guerrero, but that would be welterweight as well. Do you see what I mean? So, Broner has got a lot of options as well. I'd say he's got at least a dozen options in the next two years or whatever. So, as long as he keeps fighting everyone, he can keep talking as much trash as he wants, because I think it's quite interesting. Uh, so, I'm really looking forward to his career. But I do think he can be beaten, but I don't know who can do it. So, that's intriguing in itself, I think. And the other fight was... Blinking Hip. Who was the... Oh, Seth Mitchell. Seth Mitchell against Jonathan Banks. I thought that Seth Mitchell would win by mid-round stoppage. Got totally blasted out there in two rounds. All I can say is this. Seth Mitchell is not the next big heavyweight for America. He is not going to go far. He's not going to go far because Jonathan Banks is not a big hitter. And he was all, all over the place and out there in two rounds. If he fought Tyson Fury or David Price now... They would beat him in about 12 seconds, 13 seconds, 30 seconds, one round. David Price would slaughter him. So I don't think Seth Mitchell can go anywhere. He's obviously not got a great chin. He doesn't have a good stance. He can't clinch. He's just not that good. He's just not that good. So he was America's next big hope. Well... I'd switch my attention now to Bryant Jennings or, or Joe Hanks, someone like that. Maybe Deontay Wilder, but he needs to prove himself as well against good opponents. So anyway, wasn't impressed with Seth Mitchell, but Jonathan Banks, brilliant. I hope he gets some more good opportunities now. He deserves the payday. So I hope that Jonathan Banks gets some good paydays. And Seth Mitchell, I think, should drop down to domestic level fights and fight guys like Deontay Wilder or something like that. You know, get... Get some good American fights going, because there's some good domestic tear-ups to be made in America. It's just that they don't fight. Um, so those are my thoughts.